so I figured with this limited palette, uh, limited colors, we have dark sienna, phthalo blue, which is the lighter color blues, alizarin crimson, uh, midnight black, and titanium white. And we're going to see how easy it is to paint with some sunglasses on, okay? <laughs> I know Bob never did that, but, you know, just for the shirt, we're going to try it out today. All right, so we don't have many colors to start with, so why don't we grab a little bit of that blue. Let's grab some of the black. And we're going to come up here and just start testing out. Oh, it's really dark over there. Let's have a light side and we'll have a darker side. Oh, that's very dark. Look at that. And yours doesn't have to look exactly the same, obviously. It's going to be, you're never going to pick up the same amount of paint on your brush that I did. You know, it's never going to look the same. Your liquid might, uh, liquid white might be a little bit brighter, thicker or thinner. It might not blend the same, so don't worry if it doesn't look exact, okay? No big deal. Get a little bit more of that blue and and black mixture here. I'm going to try to leave a little area of white. We're not really mixing it in. We're just sort of dropping in the color right now. All right, take some of that down here. And I want it to get thinner and lighter as we come down to the bottom, right? We're going to have this graduation in color. Get a little bit of that blue, just straight up phthalo blue right here. Again, leaving little differences in the sky, right? Get this nice, dark, stormy looking sky. This is almost like a desert storm kind of sky, guys. What I want to do is really, I was, I was taking a picture the other day, taking a picture of one of my paintings and my hand was in front of the light, it was really casting this dark shadow onto the canvas and I thought it looked really cool. So we're going to try to recreate that darkness over here. <clears throat> Right, you can see we've got all these, just using two colors, we have all these differences in our sky, right? Dark, light, a little bit darker, but lighter. <laughs> white, dark, gray, light, everywhere, right? Just from using two different colors, plus the white that's on the canvas. I want to get some of that phthalo blue. We're going to come in from the side. Let's make some water in this painting. Okay, just as straight as you can get it, but you don't want to over mix it, right? You want to have those little differences and lines. Get this side is much darker over here, underneath that shadow, right? Make a little bit of light color in there, and that'll be like our shimmer on the water. Let's see. Okay, make sure we cover our edges, guys. Always got to cover the sides. Now, as we swipe over that, the more you swipe, the more you're going to get rid of that little white line. So don't overdo your swipes over here, okay? Just be very light, just to kind of get rid of those brush strokes, and it'll still leave that whiteness, that little reflective area down there. I really like how that's coming out. And you guys know we never plan anything happy little landscapes, right? Don't know what it's going to look like until we literally get done with it and see what we've created. Now, the cool part about when I post it on, on Facebook or I post it somewhere with the link, you've already seen the finished product when, you know, in a lot of my videos I say, like, you guys have already seen what it looks like. That's why you clicked on the link and came to watch, right? But when I'm painting them, I have no idea. Which I think is more impressive how they come out. If you have no clue what your idea is to start and you just literally follow the, you know, what the canvas is telling us to do. At least what it tells me to do. I don't know if it talks to you guys, but it talks to me. And, uh, you know, you just kind of follow it, let it show you where to go and make it up as you go along. And I think that's more impressive than sketching out a painting you know, and filling in your lines, basically. All right, I can see one gigantic cloud over here. Maybe some, like, real far off ones. I almost want to leave the top up here real dark. I like this dark color up here. It may look different to you guys. I'm, I'm looking at it through sunglasses. No, it still looks good. It still looks good. All right, 
little bit of whiteness down there still. What I want to do is just, just looks a little funny. So we're going to put in some dark. It's almost just like it was just too light over here. Now it looks a little bit different. Yeah, I like that. And you never know how much of your water is going to be covered or, you know, what's going to happen. But you want to leave like that little bit, that little bit of light down there. Okay, we're going to go back and forth, cross the whole thing, take out all these brush strokes, right? In some of our darker areas, it's a little bit thicker. So it tries to drag that color across. All right, that's how you know you have a little bit too much paint on the canvas when it starts to drag all these little lines across everything. So just make sure you go back in and blend it out so you can't see them. What we need to do, take some of this color like this, drag it down like there's a, like there's a storm out there. All right, that'll get rid of, kind of dissipate some of it, make it easy for us to uh, paint on. Might be easier if we clean the brush too. What's the YouTube camera look like, huh? Collection. Yeah, it's. I think it's how wet this this canvas may be a little bit wavy. You know how they're not perfectly tightly stretched all the time after you get done really mushing into them. And I think that's part of the issue is it's catching all these different bits of light. I tried many times <laughs> to find a good angle where it would uh, it wouldn't mess with us too bad, but. I opened up windows, I turned on different lights, I turned off lights, did all sorts of stuff. Alright, now it almost looks like we've got this, this rainy section underneath this big white cloud. I mean, you can even see the entire thing just without even planning it, right? So, there we go. We, I mean, we left a little white area on purpose, but we didn't know it was going to look like that when the, by the time it got done. So, why don't we take without doing any shadows like we normally do. Why don't we take and just put some of this white cloud up in here and just sort of stay on the edges, leave a little bit of space in between. Because as you guys know, the clouds will grow as we start to spin them out. All right, hashtag spin out your clouds. All we're really doing is just moving the paint. I don't want to blend it. I'm not even trying to uh, do anything with it. I just want it to just get disturbed from what it looks like right there. All right, however we put it on, I just want to just mess it up a little bit. Give it a little bit of imperfection, right? And the more and more you swipe over it, the more it's going to flatten those little things that we just made and take away detail. So it depends on what yours looks like and how you want it to look. Just keep going. Keep going until you like the way that it looks, right? I'm going to snag a little bit of blue in with that white, just to change up the color just a little bit. Get this far off bit back here. And you just try it. And if you don't like the way that it looks, then you can come back and fix it. Or blend it away and never have to worry about it again. You know what I mean? Totally up to you. Put another bit down here just to see what it looks like. Right? And since we only have, you know, these three colors we're working with in the sky, you have to try to get these differences. Right? Nobody's going to look at the same colored sky. It doesn't look realistic. It's never the same blue all the way across. Or the clouds are never just white. You know what I mean? There's shadows in there. Little gray bits, little blue shadows, tons of things. I'm going to mix the blue, the black, and the white up again right here just to make this gray area. Maybe we throw it in right there. And then just come back and mix it up. And it's just going to sort of separate those little clouds. Come back in. Swipe it up, throw it to the side, and now you've got this other little shadowy bit. Right? Now it looks like we sort of need some shadow underneath here, right? It almost looks like to me it can come like this. Almost like you're cutting in a water line for, you know, around the edge of your your shore. Just sort of drop some of that dark paint on. 
come back in and just, I mean, it's gonna, it's the same color right here, so you don't wanna overdo it. You just barely wanna touch it. Otherwise, you'll get that color blended in all over the place and it'll be gone. I keep forgetting which brush I'm using here. All right, so you can see just a little bit of darkness in there against that same color. We just didn't blend it out. And now you got this shadow underneath this far away cloud that's going to dump all this rain. That's what this dark color is. That's why we left it with the light over here and the dark over here. And you can drop another cloud in front of this one if you wanted to. But I think we're going to have a, a mountain that's going to come down and sort of cover. So why don't we do a little bit of just like plain white, just the far off little bit of cloud over here. And you don't even need to spin these ones. You can just literally swipe them to the side and it just pushes it way back into the distance, right? Try to make them as straight as possible. You can do a couple of those little ones. You know what I've been wanting to try is a uh, airplane chemtrail bit. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like way off in the distance, and it's just making this straight line. Now we got this little chemtrail way off there. All right. And we can take it and literally swipe it up or down, whatever you want to do. And now we've got this far off bit of of chemtrail back there. Or contrail, as they say, right? Only conspiracy theorists call it chemtrails. Alright, let's take another little bit of white and maybe way off in the distance, like just the, the smallest little bit back on this lighter area. Alright, we're just going to mix it up just the smallest little layer, the smallest little bit, swipe it over, and there we go. What do you think to the, uh, what do you think to the Contrail. I love it. I just want to get the littlest bit of this whiter, lighter color up against these, this dark one over here. Just a small bit. Okay, so we just used the brush and just sort of just mushed it around, blended it a little bit. That looks really good. That big old cloud. I want some of that same detail down in here. So we're going to put a little bit thicker bits of paint on the canvas. All right, so when we blend it out, they don't all disappear immediately. And then you get a little bit more detail on the clouds. Like that, get your lighter areas against this sort of gray bit. You know what I mean? And, uh, and then just swipe until you reach your desired effect. That's what I like to say. Just keep going until it looks how you want it to look. Got our little chemtrail in the background. Maybe we'll throw some clouds over here. A little far off buggers. Maybe they got a little bit of shadow underneath them. All right, you can do it all in one go if you really wanted to. And just remember, we're not gonna we're not gonna see all these clouds. So play with them. See what you like, and then you may end up seeing, a, you know, doing a section, and then, you know, adjusting what your painting was going to look like, and actually leaving it in there just because of that one little cloud. I've done it before. It's dark underneath this guy. Literally just swipe it across. All right now we have these little bits of shadow underneath those far off clouds. It looks really good. I really like the way it's coming out. Especially this area, I like it. Put some like, just from touching my brush, you know, I've got this, this little bit of dark paint on there. And so what I wanted to do is just give it a couple more little depth bits of shadow there. And just wipe it over. And then we're gonna take a minute and wash these brushes because they're starting to get to the point where I can't do anything. Versus taking the time, like you guys at home can take the time to stop, push pause, br uh, wash your brush as many times as you want to, right? Between even, between every stroke if you wanted to. But me, I've got to keep it moving around here, keep you guys interested. Otherwise, you'd just go find some other painter to watch, right? No, they would never do that, hon. Yeah, that's all right. The, what I mean, the, you know, that's far background. We're going to get into some focus here. Let's see. All right, I think 
our sky looks good. What do you think, hun? Oh, he looks great. Awesome. Okay, that's it. There's your seascape. Done. One and done, right? I mean, you could you could literally take it, you could change and put a wave in. Like, we're going to paint a mountain. But when you get done with your painting, you know, or done with your sky anyway, you can literally look at it and go, wow, well, it would look cool if this was a seascape, right? We have our, our horizon line back there, throw a wave in the front here, and we're done. That's the best part about painting to me. Literally make it look however you want. Change it up in the middle. Do whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to look like anything, really, except what you want it to look like. All right. Okay, we're going to make up a little bit of our mountain. And if you guys know me, which you should by now, if you don't know me by now, right? Then you'll never, ever, ever know me. <laughs> Crimson, blue, and black, right? We're going to make up our mountain here. Crimson, blue, and black. And since we're going to have two mountains in this one, let's throw a little bit of white into half the pile. Like I tell you guys all the time, I don't know who's paying attention out there. I mean, I've been doing this long enough. Do I really need to talk anymore? Or should I just say, let's make a mountain and you guys know what to do by now? All right, a little bit gray. This one's getting a little bit too light. I put a little bit too much white in there, right? So we're going to add a little bit of dark, mix it up. But you can tell there are two different colors of dark over here. And that is by design, so we can make two different mountains. Okay, Let me come up here. And just start dropping in some mountains. Shoot, see, I like this cloud so much that I don't want to add another peak but it almost feels like it needs another peak. And yours, again, does not have to look like mine, right? Does not need to at all. Your mountain can do whatever you want, depending on how your clouds looked. Just let the canvas tell you what to do. Oh, well, let's throw a little peak in over here, right? We can even come up a little higher. Scrape up some of that paint. We can keep going on forever. All right, just make a mess, guys. Clean off your knife. Make a mess in there, right? Because it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You can do whatever you want to do. <clears throat> I don't think I've set the palette down once, this, uh, this painting. I really got this thing in here tight today. All right, now we don't want to overblend again because we're only using the same couple colors, and it's very close to the color that's, you know, in the sky already. So... I don't want to overdo it. You should take the time to say hello to a couple new people like Ryan Styles. Uh, what's his name? Rod? Rod Styles. Rod Styles. I don't know why I think Ryan. Styles, my man, if he's watching. He has a uh, solar company that you guys should probably check out if you're local to Las Vegas area. Ooh, came out of our lines a little bit, but that's all right. Right, come up. Not everything has to be, you know, a, a triangle point or you know, a perfect shape. You don't want to have these perfect bits to it. Okay? Maybe that guy comes over this way. And then you can sort of set up how you want your highlights and shadows to look just with your, your brush strokes and sort of create what you want to see. It's like a preview, right? It's like a trailer. It's a trailer to my mountain just in these brush strokes of how the snow is going to fall you know, where the shadows are going to be. And then I can go back later and uh, highlight it and low light it and follow this little map that I've created, right? This is like my sketch. We were talking about sketching paintings earlier. This is like my sketch. I love how we have this lighter area over here, the dark area, like it's raining back behind the mountain over there or snowing. Since this is a winter scene, you could call it snow. All right, let's go in. We're going to grab a little bit of paint from that darker colored pile. And back here, we're going to throw in our shadows, right? Some people like to throw in their highlights first. Uh, somebody asked me on YouTube earlier today, actually, like, why do you put your shadows in first uh, versus doing, you know, I've seen other people do it this way. And my answer to that was, you know, you have 
the more you know it's it's hard when you when you fill this whole thing full of highlights and you have to go back in and for someone who's been doing it long enough it's not bad right I do it quite frequently but for a beginner anyway let throw your shadows down gives you sort of an idea where to go with your highlights and then as you mix your highlights in it will ch it will it will blend with this color and give you these different colors that you might not have been able to get on your palette as you were mixing it right and I'll show you what I mean when we get there. Throw a little bit of shadow off on this guy. A little bit over there. Then we'll come in with our white. Maybe there's a touch in here somewhere. Maybe a little over there. Just wherever you want. You don't want to fill up your entire mountain. But you want to have a fair amount of them. And in random places too. Unless you put it on so thick that you're going to cover all that very thick with white. I would put it in some random places and that way you'll get these rocks that sort of stick out uh, like they never got covered in snow. And it's going to look really neat. Okay, now we're going to take a little bit of snow. We're going to have two different piles, okay? I want one pile with like the smallest amount of blue in it. The smallest amount, just so it changes it just barely from white to this sort of sky blue, very light blue, and very, very light. And then I want to get like the teeniest little, the smallest little bit of dark and mix it in with that just so it dulls the color just a little bit, okay? And mix it up and it'll be this like gray color. You want to mix all that dark in there and get this gray color and that'll look, this grayish blue, right? And that'll look like our shadows against our white snow. I'm going to get a little bit more blue. Just a touch. Okay, get this whole pile up here. All right. Now, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to grab from my white pile over here. Try to keep it away from this dark. Where did this dark come from? You ever do that? Like, wonder where, so, like, why is this color on this spot of my palette? Okay, we're going to come over here. Grab up a little bit of white, and let's say maybe this guy, he's got a little touch over here. I forgot to put a little bit of shadow on that peak, so we're going to leave him. And now watch this, as we go over these, these darker shadow bits with our color, see how it changed right there, just all on its own? So you get these differences in color, and you don't even have to do anything. That's the best part. You have to do literally nothing and it will do it all on its own. You get all these little differences. Everything changes and uh, ends up looking really nice. I'm gonna have these like real thick tops to the, to the mountain today, guys. It's like deep winter snow. <clears throat> and each time I'm going back and wiping off my palette knife, because it starts to turn from white to this same gray color we're going over. So I want to wipe it off. That way it's fresh and bright every time. All right, come down. You can do whatever you want. Make any kind of shape you want to make. Get it sort of thick on your palette knife and then just let it rock and roll. All right, go around some of those dark shadows. Bring it down, let it break on its own. Right up here, I want it real thick and white, like it's real deep, real deep snow. Maybe this one comes over this side, and then it goes down. You don't want to have them all in the same uh, direction, you know what I mean? It'll just make it look more realistic. A little bit of shadow, a little bit of shadow over here. Just sort of mix these in, that way it's not so dark right off the bat. A little bit up here. This easel sort of gets in the way. Bring it down, right? Really pushing hard down here at the bottom because we're going to make a bunch of fog out of that. So don't worry. Back here, you know what I'm going to do? Use that little, little bit of a different color for back here. A little bit more gray. Makes it pushes those guys further away. Right? They're not so close to us. This guy back here on the top. Pull it down. Doesn't have to look like mine, remember? There we go. 
I mean, this, and this is what I'm talking about right here. This is the exact moment that I'm speaking of earlier. Is once you do your highlights and now you have to come in when, and try to sneak little shadows into different places, right? It's more difficult as a beginner to do this than it is for someone like me who's been painting for longer, right? And that would answer the question, why, why do you do your, uh, your shadows first? Well, now you know. Put some of this gray color in here too. Just to, again, just little differences. Different colors in different places. Just sort of let it mix in. And you guys know me, right? What comes next? We come back with our shadows and really throw in like some deep dark bits. Right? This is sort of where you make your mountain come to life. Like how's it gonna how's it gonna live? What's happening as we come down these little hills, right? Just throw lighter and darker bits in, in different places. All right, then you'll have these cool little shadows and different things happening. And I like using the knife because it becomes very random. You know, it'll, it'll dump shadow in places that it wants. In, you know, different um, amounts. So it's not all the same. A different little bump. Give me a little bump on this hill back here. There we go. Gotta have a bump. That gray kind of snow coming down in here. Mixing in over there. We're gonna pull some of it to the side and we're just gonna let it mix, right? So we're gonna overdo this bit. Remember I'm always like, don't overdo it. You gotta overdo it a little. Do as I say, not as I do, right babe? My wife is here, guys. Say hello to her. She is a gigantic help when it comes to doing these things. Without her, you guys saw me last week. It was sort of a cluster. Not even last week, just a few days ago. Bit of a cluster trying to do everything that she does when I'm not even looking. I'm, my focus is up here, and she's making sure you guys get responses. And and uh, you know, it, you got if you're answering questions, you get a response to your question taking your requests, right? We're not going to do any requests on this video because I have a very specific idea of what I want to do. So no requests today. What do you think, Bailey? How's it coming? Looks nice. Looks nice, she said. Just nice. It's just nice, Dad. It's not great. It's not fantastic. It's just nice, Dad. See? The, the truth of a kid. <laughs> it's just nice, I guess. If you're gonna twist my arm about it, it's just nice. That's all right. What does everyone else think about it? Babe, do we have any other comments? Allison says, ooh, liking this. Troy yeah. Bell says, that makes a lot of sense now about doing shadows first, watching you do it. Right, because now you've got all these different colors, and it's not, you know, like, in, even in some of Bob's episodes, when he does, when you come in and just do that straight line, I don't like the straight lines. You rarely find straight lines in nature. So, let's see. We're going to come up in different places on this, right? You don't want it to be all the same, like a, like a straight line across, right? You want to have these little differences come down, come up, and then make your uh, little bits of fog out of that. I mean, even taking our little shadowy areas, right? Because even fog is not just one color. You've got all these little differences in color. So we'll take a little bit, bring it in there. See, we've still got some of our light shine down on the water down here. I think our mountain grew a little bit bigger than what we'd anticipated. But uh, that's okay. It is all right. We can still make something great out of this and save the water down around the bottom. It can still happen. Okay, I want to come just very lightly in the direction that I painted these. I want to come up and just with like three hairs and some air. I'm not even joking. And all it does is just sort of blur, blur this bit down at the bottom so the top stays nice and crisp. What's up, babe? Okay. Then I saw something. Oh, no worries. I don't think I've hidden anything. Maybe this might be like a mouth 
an eyeball to like a snapping turtle or something? No, no, look at that one mountain. The what? That one mountain. What about it? Right here? Yeah. What's wrong with it? You should blend it. I see something wrong. The shadow is on the outside versus being on the inside. Is that what you saw? Mm-hmm. Not see. I have all of our shadows correct. There we go. Thanks for the tip, Bailey. Awesome. <clears throat> I'd invite you to come on camera, but I think you're too short to be able to reach. All these, like, this, I love this easel, right? You can get this easel, Amazon.com slash shop slash Happy Landscape Art. Best easel I've ever had, because I've only ever had two, and this is one. <laughs> so, <laughs> best easel I've ever had. But, you know, it's a little, like, if you were going to be sitting, you could sit no problem. Um, if it was on the floor. Yeah, if it was on the floor. <laughs> I've got it up on my, my tables, and depending on the size of the canvas, you have to lift the bottom up. The top doesn't come down, which is a, sort of a design flaw to me, but whatever. I like painting up here. Bob Ross painted up here above his above his shoulders, so it's nice. That I could probably reach up to like that mountain. Yeah, right. Okay, let's see. Now, what are we going to do, you guys? Put more chemtrails. <laughs> oh, we were going to do another mountain. Alright, we said we were going to do two mountains, right? So let's do like a small little bit of mountain, maybe up into our shadows, right? Over here. Come up again. So I don't want it to be too big, right? So we're going to take some of this paint and scrape it off of the canvas. All right? Scrape it up onto our knife. Still leaving a little bit of color up there, but we got a whole lot of it off. The more paint that's on here, the more is going to. Uh, um, it's going to make your mountain much longer and bigger. So if you want a short little mountain. Scraped off. What's up, hun? Jenny is watching and she said, Yeah, that last easel you had was total junk. <laughs> That's not what I meant, Jenny. <laughs> Our friend Jenny and Tori, friends, they uh, they bought me my first easel for my birthday when I first started painting. And I had it for two years, Jenny. <laughs> so don't give me that. Okay? But the bigger the canvas, the harder it was for that tabletop kind of briefcase easel, which I used to promote like crazy because that's what I had. So, you know, and it's a fantastic little easel for traveling, going to farmer's markets and stuff like that. If you're going to go paint out in the wilderness, get the little briefcase easel. They're like 40 bucks and, uh, you know, they're perfect for like an 18 by 24. Anything bigger than that, they start to get a little bit wobbly. So, you know, and everybody, I had like a U-Haul box with Christmas wrapping paper on it, Jenny, okay? Didn't look good, so I had to get a bigger easel, all right? I have to move this iPad. And I like it. Okay, move it. My wife is the director. She thinks that uh, I get mad when she does stuff, but without you, I would have no idea what it looked like. And we're going to pull these little mountains out down here. Just a little bit, though, right? We don't have a lot of paint on the canvas because we scraped it all off. And I don't want them to grow too big. There we go. Yeah, we are quickly quickly running out of room on this canvas, guys. All right, again, we're going to go in. You know what? We'll do the we'll do the sh we'll do the the highlights first on this one. Just to show you guys the difference, right? And again, we have two different colored highlights cuz Josh likes differences in color, right? So we have that gray color, which is the blue, the black, and the white, but just very very small bits of blue and black, and then we have pretty much straight white. Okay, so we're going to come in maybe on the back side of that white. There's a little bit, maybe it goes down this way. Maybe, who knows, maybe it comes over here. Depends, that's just the gray, okay? We're gonna come in with the white. And you can see just those little small differences and it's starting to sort of mix in with the gray so we have these different colors. Do the gray and white simultaneously on this guy. Okay, gonna break it down. And maybe over here it comes down and goes off that direction, we don't know. Okay, now I gotta come back in with my shadow color, which again is now going to be super dark because I'm not allowing it to mix with any of this white if we do the white or the lighter colors first. So now I'm gonna have these real dark shadows 
which look good for our front mountain. You wouldn't, you might not want shadows this dark for your, you know, rear mountain. I mean, I mean, they're about the same. What are you even talking about, Josh? But again, it's not going to over. It's not going to mix with any of this lighter color underneath because we put the light colors on first. Which is again one of the reasons why. And this right here, trying to fit these little, this little bit of shadow in there, it's just annoying to me. Just annoying. And then you end up coming back and and covering over bits of your shadow anyway, right? Bob does that all the time. We'll come back and change it and cover over this or cover over that. In which case it's mixing again with the shadows, so you might as well just do the dang shadows first. Okay, just 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 do it. You might like it if you do the shadows first. We might just have room for like a little bit of river over here, guys. Like I'm not even joking. It's uh we sort of went ham with this big, this big mountain in the back. All right, come in with a little bit of shadow for this guy. And again, the way that you swipe your knife is important. Let's go with a small edge. The way you drag your knife down can leave little bits, little differences in color, which turn into little amazing details that you didn't even plan on. Okay. Now finally we'll come back in and just very lightly sort of drag in different places and we'll drop in a couple couple little bits of rock that never got covered up. Right? And it just makes it look more realistic in my mind if it's not all the same, you know, even if it's all white, it's not all the same white. Right? We have all these little differences, places where the sun is just really, really trying to get in there find a place and it just can't because it's so dang dark in these crevices, right? <clears throat> Gotta leave a place for all your creators to live. There we go, we'll come out again. Again, in different heights, I, wanna, I want there to be fog in different levels of this thing. Right, and this side will come down over here. Just make it a little bit foggy, just so there's a, even there's a difference in the color right here. Right. Come back in and make our little circles. It just mixes up our fog a bit. In this case, I think we need to add a little bit of white to the fog because it's a little too dark. Like that. It just changes it up a bit. And you don't over mix it, and that way you have these different colors, right? really neat. I see something over here like there's a bit of another little bit of mountain back there. Maybe it comes up over here. Just bits that are in front, right? And we can take, add our little humps and bumps. Maybe this one comes down in front of these guys. I really want to get get a fair amount of paint so these kind of stand out away from the uh, background sort of fogginess right again we're putting the land in in different places the shadows right in different places so when we pull these out it stays dark in different places and lighter in some places like that you see how we can sort of make it look however we want and then That'll tell us where we can put our shadows and stuff like that. Right, go around the side, finish it on the side over there. Get down here. Maybe we'll just do this whole little mountain scene, right? Like we're running low on uh, we're running low on um, water down here. So maybe we'll just change our idea. Right? These mountains are looking so good that uh, we can change our idea and just, ch you know, make this whole little mountain scene. And we'll have all this fog at the bottom. It'll be great. Like the clouds are rolling through, right? In which case, we need another, we'll have another bit come up down here to finish it off. Right? And then we'll have like five mountains in this painting. Which will be cool. And I won't even have used the brown that I got out, you know. <laughs> like a clown. Alright, let's get
come in. We'll do this guy first over here. Grab some of that black, blue, crimson, right? Mix it all together. Now I'm going to have all this paint on my palette, and we'll have to do another one. All right, get those shadows up. All right, these are much darker now, and we got to remember where our light is hitting. And I'm using much more, much thicker blobs of paint in this section as we get closer to us, right? We actually need to fix something here. Go like this, just so we can get this guy out on the edge, right? Get him out on the edge, and then we can tighten this back down. Sorry if I'm getting in the way, but my Bob Ross hair gets in the way, right? All right, we're going to come in like this. That bit's in the light, and this bit would be in the shadow as well. All right. Again, thicker globs of paint. We're using more paint in this area than, uh, than we have throughout the entire thing. Just a bit of shadow on that side of the hill, a bit of shadow on that side of the hill. Maybe this whole thing comes down. Again, you can't really overdo it on your shadows. Because uh, you can always come back and cover over them with your highlight color, right? Depending on what it looks like. We can even throw like one giant evergreen tree in over here. Or just like the top of it, right? Just come to about there. and be the top of a tree with all these mountains, all this fog, right? I'm going to take this over here and just mix it up like there's, you know, you can't tell where it starts and where it stops. And now just from doing that, it looks like this cloud is wrapped around and come inside, start to fill everything up with this fog, which looks really neat. I really want like a dark bit of line there, just to show that that bit's behind. All right, come back in. Over in these, you know, far away areas, we're really going to put a bit of that darkness in there. in and just sort of mix that up and mix it in. There we go. Okay, a little, couple little swipes. You guys know. You already know. I don't even need to explain it anymore. Why do I even talk to you guys? You guys know what I'm doing. Right? All the fans, Bailey. Want to come say hi to the fans, Bailey? Sure. Come say hi to all the fans. I don't know if you'll be able to stand up tall enough to be on camera. You want to hold the palette? Here, you hold the palette and you paint, and then I'll see what it looks like through the camera back here. What, why? Stand up as tall as you can. I want my tippy toes right Yeah, I know, right? That shows you how high it is. Hang on. Come here. Hold the palette. There we go. Now we can paint, right? Do you want to wear the wig? Sure. <laughs> it's getting hot on my head. All right, give me this back, assistant. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Let's see. Let's come in just on our shadowy bits with that gray and just leave a couple little bits, you know, a couple little chunks of gray on there. Not too many because we don't want to cover all those shadows, right? Just whatever sticks, sticks. Now we're going to come in with our straight white, our titanium white, as Stewie would say. We're going to bring it down into our little foggy area at the bottom, right? Maybe this guy goes this way. And we have all these chunks of texture, right? This is almost like a complete palette knife painting. We use the palette knife a lot. There we go, right? Differences in shape shadow, right? All of the light is coming this way, so you would imagine that the right side of our rocks would be, you know, in the light. And again, just from mixing the whites with that, you know, shadowy area that we put on, it changes it just all on its own. And again, that's why I like to do the shadows first. Right, how many times have I said that, Bailey? About a hundred times, according to my assistant. 
right? Just little changes, little differences, little bits. It's looking pretty good. And then you just step back, take a look. If you want more, you know, white in certain areas, but you get all these little shadows just all on their own, right? Don't even have to do anything. Mix that in just so it darkens it up. See, the more we mix with it, the darker it gets, right? I like it. Take our little snowy side over here. Maybe this side comes down this way. And then there's like a little bit of little valley in between and then we can come back over here and really make like a line so this just sort of pushes that back right come in with our shadows little bits down in there that are shadowed in a little ridge onto the side over here and just literally make it up as we go along guys that's all we're doing it's just making it up having fun seeing what sticks Right? That's all you gotta find out is what's gonna stick onto the canvas. And again, we've only used four colors, the crimson, the white, the blue, and the black. Haven't used the brown. May use it for the trunk of like a gigantic tree or something like that. It's about the only reason I would use any brown, right, Bailey? Mm -hmm. This side again, just brightening it up a little bit. Maybe we got a little bit of color onto this shadow over there. A little bit of color over here. See, now we've added too much white. So we need to come back in with our dark area. What do you think, babe? Looks spectacular. Oh, you like it? How's it look on the camera? That's what I always worry about. It looks nice. So we almost need, if we're trying to do this little valley with this little hump of rock, you can put a little hump of shadow there come back and make this one a bit brighter. And that way it should push it behind. There we go. All these little different bits and different places, different things that are real bright and real thick full of paint. And then you can't forget your shadows, right? A little bit underneath here, under that little thing there. So we'll just darken it up just a smidge. And just bring these down and sort of off to the side. It looks really good. I like it anyway. What does Bailey think? Oh, it's just okay, Dad. It just I looks like okay. It. I like more mountains. You like the mountains? Yeah. Okay. I'm even going to come up this way and just make our little foggy bit, right? we got to come up into different areas so it doesn't look like we just came across with a knife and chopped it up, right? And then again, if you mix it, then you can go back over with your knife and not drag, uh, your brush, not your knife, and not be dragging everything everywhere. And if you have too much paint, that's laying too thick onto the canvas, you're not going to be able to do anything. There we go. Get a little bit of that dark color. Mix it up into there. And again, we've left this little dark area. We've got a lighter area and a darker area up here. And it's all these different shadows and stuff in the fog. And then we're going to drop this one little cliff down right in here. And then we should be done, guys. What do you think? I mean, we could do a big tree. You think it needs a big tree? No. You don't? Just mountains, okay. What does everyone else think? What do you guys think? Do we need a gigantic tree maybe on this side? Or would that kill too much of the cloud? We can do it on this side. Just mountains. Just mountains, that's what everyone says. <laughs> no that's one. what my wife says. No one says anything yet. Alright, come on guys. Allison says superb. Troy Bell says it looks awesome. Okay. Roberta Harris says looks really good. Beth Bueller says, don't touch. Don't touch. Maybe a cabin. <laughs> nah, there's no room for a cabin this high up in the mountains. Alright, gonna get the side, because you guys know if you want to see what it looks like on the side, you gotta buy it. Allison says, I agree, just mountains. Okay, well, I'm glad everyone is in agreement for my painting. 
<laughs> Glad all you guys agree. Please do what? I think one day we should just do like just a suggestion painting. Yeah. Do I have paint on my nose? Oh my. Yes. How did that happen, guys? <laughs> did you get a tattoo on your face? Thanks for telling me, family. <laughs> yeah. Just sore. Keep you guys here to tell me stuff like that. All right. Nice big chunk of mountain. Again, you can see we've left it randomly lighter and darker in different places. I've never done a painting with all mountain. I mean, I did one when I was first starting out. Thought I was cool, you know. And it didn't turn out this good. I'll tell you that. Whoops. Good lord, I about chucked a whole chunk of white all over the wall. That'll be the shadows for our next highlight section. There we go. Little bits of mountain. And again, they're not straight. I don't want them to be these straight lines. Right? Gotta have imperfections, we call them. I call them imperfections because you don't want it to be perfect. Alright, take this, we're going to come down. Nobody wants to learn how to paint a tree. You guys think you're so good already that you can already paint trees, right? You don't need my help anymore. I see. It just looks cool with the mountains. I see what you all are like. Alright, again, we're just sort of pulling it out in the, you know, what we think might look neat. Sort of trying to lay out our shadows and stuff before we even get finished. This bit comes over here, coming this way, and then that bit comes down this way. Comes up a little, comes down. There we go. All right, now we can sort of see we've got all these little imperfections and stuff crazy shaped bit of mountain over here. Did you guys see that last YouTube live where I painted a teddy bear into the mountain? No joke. It's actually sitting right up there. Can you see that one up there on the camera? No. Not no? on this camera. Ah, boo. It looked pretty neat. My daughter said, she's like, once, I've, once you see the bear, you can't see anything else in the painting. Which is kind of funny to me. Alright, let's see. All this stuff. Right, we got this bit, that, like this little shelf that comes over here. Troy Bell says, it looks like you are on a mountain peak looking over a mountain range. That's dope. Thank you, Troy, sir. Allison said, just need more help with the mountains. Ah, everyone wants to learn to paint mountains. That's it. I used to think recently the, uh, you know, you could take your, you should do your mountain all in one go like that, right? But I found that uh, in these last few, especially with these desert style mountains, if you sort of bounce your, bounce your knife as you're doing it, you know what I mean? You get all these little differences, different things. It breaks differently versus this one big stripe like um, you get some shadow up in here one big stripe like this like whoosh, you know what I mean it breaks it breaks like that if you do it quickly enough but uh, you don't get all this sort of things that make it look even more realistic I think a couple little bits I want this dark shadowy area in between these two things and now we've made two mountains out of one I mean, we did the whole section first, but now we made two distinctly different bits of rock. Did someone just toot? No, that was the that was the can. can. I know, I know. <laughs> it sounded like someone tooted in here. There we go. Look at that. That's neat looking. That is neat looking. I'm gonna make it real dark, right where we have these different. Like our knife came down to the side like this, and then we're coming straight down, so we have these different, uh, different planes, I guess you could call them. And the more dark that you have on your knife, the quicker your your white paint will turn dark. Trust me. There we go, just like that. Maybe like a swipe or two 
in between, like a little bit of rock got lit up, got stuck with some snow and the little deep crevices, right? There we go. Take this thing over here, pull it down this way, throw in some more shadows just to darken it up a smidge, but know that we have some color there. Now we're going to come in with our white over the top of that gray. What you guys doing? What's Bailey doing? Watching her phone while I'm painting? Yes. Bailey. This is a business, kid. Ooh, that's going to look nice. Just from doing that one thing with the, the dark, and then we can put this little bit of light right on top of it. And almost like that's casting a shadow right down there, right? And we'll come back, put our little gray mixture on this side, just in little different places, right? Different parts where we think there may be a little bit of shadow. Come back with our dark color, our black. And I really want to get some dark bits into here. Not too many though. You guys know me, right? I sit back there and yell at myself to stop and uh, end up taking it too far. There we go. A bit of that gray in there. I'm really trying to just get some to break. And I always say to you guys, like, don't try to force it, right? If it doesn't want to stick, it doesn't want to stick. But sometimes you've got to force that sucker. Right? If you think you can, do it. If you start making mud and it goes all, all pear-shaped, then quit while you're ahead. There we go. Get a shadow down into here. And we'll do this whole sucker full of mountains, just like my wife wants. And Allison. And Allison. Since she, you know, Allison runs my channel. And Troy. Yeah. And Troy, all you guys run my channel, and you guys, you know, decide what we put out. So we'll do it your way. Sounds good to me. Yeah, no, I do like. <laughs> I like getting. Uh, I like getting requests from you guys. Sometimes I just something I didn't think of, or you know, and it, it sort of pushes the painting in a really cool direction. So I appreciate you guys on that. What I've done now is mix a little bit of the blue. I forgot that we even had the dang blue. Mix a little bit of the blue back in here, just so we have what guys? Who's going to be the first person to type it out? First person wins a thousand dollar Amazon gift card. No, I'm just messing with you. Come on, what am I about to say? Why am I putting this blue in here? Because we need what? What is Josh always harping on? Who's going to be the first person to say it? I'm clicking backwards and forwards between Facebook and YouTube to see. Who's going to be the first person to say, Josh is talking about diff... Ooh, I almost just said it. I don't want to say it and give it away. No Amazon gift card, by the way. That was a joke. There we go. A little bit more shadow. Jenny says shadows. Well, differences in color is what I was going to say. Because that's what we always say at the channel over here. you got to have differences in color. If you want to play the game. People are going to buy your painting. They don't want to see the same color, you know, even in your mountains, right? That's why we have, that's why we do all these little breaks and shadows and different stuff, right? So we don't end up with the same colors everywhere. Put a little bit of that blue into here, into these shadows, right? Just really try to get this close down here before the fog eats it up. Bit of that dark color in there. It's looking really good. Good suggestion on whoever said, you know, just do all mountains. I think it was my wife. And Allison. And Allison and, and Tom. Who else? Troy. Troy. You guys know me. I love my deep shadows, right? So even in this instance, I could come down a little bit further into the fog, right? And show you guys how we can get it just a little bit further down, fill up that spot, right? 
Now it's become very dark. So I'm going to switch to a filbert brush just because I want to stay in this little area without touching my mountain, right? But again, making those same little circles. Now we've filled in that little section down there, right? Just mix it until it looks right to your eye. Man, that looks cool. I haven't taken a step back and looked at this one. Come down here, just a little mix. A little here and there, just with the, the very tip of the filbert brush. All right, that way I'm not touching any part of the mountains below. Still trying to create that fog though. It goes down through there. It looks good. There's nothing on this guy though. There we go. A couple little bits. A couple little bits of shadow in your lighter color really just bring the depth out. Right? There we go. And again, be mindful of how you pull the knife in which direction you're you're moving down because that is, you know, affecting what your mountain is going to look like. There we go. That looks good. I'm just sort of coming back and darkening up these areas that I think need to be a little bit darker. While you guys are like, Josh, stop. Oh my god. I like that. It's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. What do you think, Bailey? I like it. Oh, she likes it, guys. I'll put a little bit of blue back in here. Just to mix in with that darker black color, and that way we have differences in color, you guys. There we go. And what's so cool is you can just sit here and play and change what it looks like, change what your, you know, change everything about it. If you're Bob Ross, you would change it every three seconds. A little bit of dark in with the blue. You just get these little differences. All right, a little bit of blue up into the deep shadows up here. There we go. That's looking good. And this is my gripe about trying to put in shadows, guys. Is trying to go back and do it afterwards can be a big pain in the butt. And a little bit over here, a couple little, a couple little shadowy bits. A little bit of blue in our mountain. And that's just going to top everything all off. Just all these little pieces of blue. And someone's going to come in and notice, you know, what we've done to create this blue and, and white mountain. And again, when you only have a few colors like we do today, I mean, I have all the colors, but I figured a lot of people struggle sometimes to find all the whole set. So we would, you know, do a painting with only a few. If you only have a few, this painting's perfect for you, right? We're trying to mix that in with the sky up there. That's what happens when you get so much paint on your brush without cleaning it, right? I'm trying to show you guys you can do all these paintings just without cleaning your brush just a few times. All right, what time is it? Anybody? Time? What time 11 is it, Pop? 11.06. So we've been painting for an hour. I don't think there's much left, unless you guys want a tree. No if you want to keep it all mountains, all mountains, and kill my idea, I'll take a step back and look at it. See if I can get my wig in the camera. Now that looks really, really, really cool. I really like the way that one came out. Really. Allison says it's ten past seven in the UK. Ten past seven. There we go. Oh shit! I grabbed some brown accidentally. Now we got to get rid of this brown. There we go. I can't get like when your paint is real thick. It's, sometimes it's tough to get it stuck to the tip top of your mountain where you need it to be. Let's see, what if we did like another bit of something back in there? A little bit of rock or something. This thing's starting to look so cool, you guys. 
bit back there, maybe a little bit darker shadow. And now we've added another piece of mountain to our mountain. Another little bit of rock that sticks up. Now bring our snow down a little bit. And then I think we're about to call it, guys. When my wife says it looks good, she's usually telling the truth. And over that bit just a little. There we go. And even some nice dark bits would look good down in there. Like you could sit here and play with these for hours, right? Allison says, so your wife and I will write mountains. Yeah. Yep, you guys are always right. No chance in fighting it. Beth Bueller says, yeah, it does. It looks really cool. Well, thank you, Beth. You're just missing some birds. Yeah, we got to put our birds in. It does look really cool, I agree. It's always funny, we're always the hardest on ourselves as artists. So when you do paint one and you're like, wow, that's like the best one I've ever painted. And then people don't respond to it like that. It's like freaking just a punch in the gut. Here we go. Like some of my, my quote unquote best paintings are still hanging up in my house or in my studio here. While some of my worst sell right away. You know what I mean? So I think they're the worst paintings. Being my own critic, own worst critic, and uh, they sell right away. So they weren't the worst paintings, obviously. There we go. Take a little bit. You guys know I don't like these straight lines. There we go. Blend that out. Now we need this super bright bit of white right here, just to push the rest of that mountain back. There we go. Just like that. All right. I mean, we could sit here and throw mountains in all day long. We literally could. And every time I look, I keep seeing something that I want to change. Stop. What's up? Stop. Are people yelling stop in the comments? Not yet. I just wanted just to change it up just a little. There we go. Oh, now there's a bit of mountain back there, just way off in the fog. Right on. All right, let's take our sunglasses off and really look at it. Let's see what it looks like. Holy cow! That is cool. I like that. Should have left this bit alone. Ah, a clean, dry brush, right? There we go. Yeah, there's one more brush I need to clean. Well, I hope you guys liked painting this one. Everyone who's kind of sat here and stuck it out with us and and stayed with us. Thank you for that. You guys can get all your supplies in my uh, Amazon storefront link. Happy little uh, Amazon.com slash what? Stop it. No, I like stuff. I mean, look, that looks even better now. Stop it. Just with that shadow. Amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, right? You can go find all of your supplies in there. Here we go. From you can I mean you can get this easel, this canvas, the the Bob Ross brushes, all the Bob Ross paints, Windsor and Newton, Gamblin nineteen eighty, whatever you guys like to use, you can find right down there uh, in the Amazon storefront link. And every time I keep looking at this sucker. I just feel like this needs to be darker down here. I mean, we're down at the bottom, the very bottom of our canvas. It's got to be dark. And now this one's going to take like 17 days to dry because of how thick all the paint is on there. My wife's like, stop it. Stop putting paint on the canvas, God damn it. Beth Bula wants me to take your knife away. Here. Wait, it's got to be on camera. Oh, she took it from me. Now what am I going to do? And you still have paint on your nose. I still have paint on my nose? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs>
Well, it is what it is. At least I don't have paint on my wig, right? Well, I'm glad you guys stuck with me. She's literally taken my knife away now, and now I can't do anything. Use so. a brush. <laughs> <laughs> can't use a brush. But all right, uh, thanks guys for hanging out. Uh, if you want to buy this painting, go to etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. If you uh, are looking to follow me on Facebook, go to facebook.com slash happy landscape art. Or anything else that you need, the easiest place to go is happylowlandscapes.com. Okay? You can find everything you need there. I need the knife back. No, you don't. I need it. You don't. All right. Well, I have two. No, it, stop it. I have two knives. Oh. There, I mean, look at that. Just with that little bit of dark in Stop there, it. Right? Beautiful. You have no birds. Oh, I have no birds. Who said that? My wife or yeah. someone else? Your wife said that. My wife likes that I paint our family into every painting, I Roberta think. Roberta Harris says, did you do your birds? Oh, Roberta likes it too. All right. We're going to get paint thinner into our black pile or dark pile. And why don't we put our guys up here today. I need more. You want to make it really light like it's ink. <laughs> Just fall off of your palette if you were holding on to it right. I can't get it today. What's going on with this sucker? Baby Bailey. Back in there. All right. I have a question. Yeah, what's up, babe? Why am I so small? Because you're smaller than us. You're a small human being. She's not a baby. She's like the tallest nine-year-old you've ever seen, but mm. you're still smaller than us, so, you know, mom and dad are about the same. And then you, back off in the distance. Beth Beulah says, now sign it. Now sign it. See, everyone tell me what to do today. I was going to put water in this one. Put a bunch of big trees with a bunch of big, uh, bright, like, bark at the bottom. Let me go like this. We'll come over here. And bam. I always sign it in like the thickest area, so when you go over it the first time, it sort of pushes the, the paint out of the way, and then you can come back and fill it in. Come back, fill it in, bam. Looking good. <clears throat> Alright, I have a mountain of brushes to go clean, guys. So. Everybody go to happylittlelandscapes.com, like crash my server, right? Everyone over there immediately. Happylittlelandscapes.com. Uh, you can book one-on-one -on -one classes. You can uh, find me on all of my different sites. You can learn how to paint. You can buy your supplies. You can find me on YouTube or, or Facebook or Instagram or everything. All happylittlelandscapes.com, okay? And uh, besides that, you guys take care. Have a great day. Uh, the painting looks amazing. I really like how it came out. And thanks everybody and my beautiful wife for suggesting we just do all mountains today, right? So uh, you'll be able to catch a edited version of this live painting. Yeah, you'll be able to catch an edited version of this live painting on our other camera that we'll put up on YouTube at some point in the future. And then you'll be able to go back and, uh, and watch it a million times, uh, you know, to get all those details right. Uh, but besides that, you know, we're going to... Um, we're going to finish it off Stop and it. say goodbye. Stop I got it. it. I got to put a little shadow under there. You don't, though. I do. It needed it. It needed it. And now this guy. Okay, have a wonderful day, guys. Yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> we like to sit here all day and play around. So, okay. You guys take care. We'll see you on the next live next Sunday. And catch my new YouTube video coming out on Wednesday. So, see you guys later. Have a great day.